Hey everyone, I'm Rick Beato, and today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 17. The band is Boston, and the song is Hitch a Ride. Coming up next. The Boston debut record was released on August 25th, 1976. I remember hearing it on the radio when I was a kid, and my brother Lou went out and picked it up, and he would listen to it nonstop, front to back, every single day. One of the things that we noticed was it didn't sound like any other record that we had ever heard. The guitar sounds were completely different. These really heavy, distorted guitars, these big solos that were double-tracked, and then they were, they were dual solos all these harmony parts, all these really interesting clean guitar parts. It was unlike anything that had come out before. The reason that this record didn't sound like anyone else was because of Tom Schultz, who played guitar, keyboards, bass, wrote and produced everything on the record right in his basement and had the singer Brad Delp, who is just an incredibly great singer that gave that record its unique sound. Let's get into the track here and talk about the beginning guitar part. Okay, so the track is actually tuned a half step high. Now I've gone ahead and tuned my guitar up a half step just for this demonstration. Typically you would just use a capo at the first fret, but I thought it'd be easier for you to see just in standard position what the chords were. So it goes like this. <laughs> So the verse chords are this. It starts out with a B-flat power chord. Remember, I'm two and a half step high. A-flat, five power chord over B-flat, and then that's an E-flat major chord with a B-flat in the bass, and then to a B-flat major. Okay, let's talk about the vocal melody. Now, this is a really great melody because it can be played as a chord melody on the guitar here or on any instrument because it follows the changes perfectly. Check it out. This chord tones here, we got root to the th third of the A flat major chord to the root of the E flat, then third to the root of the B flat chord. So there it is. And then the second phrase, Starts the same way. It's got one non chord tone. Uh, it goes to the ninth on the second chord. It goes root to the beautiful, and then to the to the fifth of the B flat chord there, and then the third phrase. Oh, that's really cool. It goes way up to the root here on the B flat, then. And then to the root, to third root on the B flat. So here we go. We have that major seventh interval there, which sounds killer on this A flat chord there. It's a B flat uh, dominant uh, sus with a 13. So to E flat major, root to the fifth, and then third third root and then the last phrase goes it has a little blues thing and everybody goes and then a little uh blues lick down to the root of the b flat chord okay this is where the track really gets interesting bass and drums enter here with the acoustic and the vocal in the chorus listen I want to uh, bring your attention to something, the bass part in this. Now, the bass line, everybody talks about Boston's guitar parts, but Tom Schultz is playing the bass on this, and this bass part in this whole track is really amazing. Check this out. I'll play bass and drum. is all over the place it's incredibly tight with the drums and it's kind of a it's almost like a Motown bass part let's check it out by itself listen to the bass sound <laughs> that 
That is a great bass sound. It's got a lot of fatness to it. The compression is making it really even. It's got great bottom end to it, and it's really accurately played, especially with the drums. Before we talk about the vocal harmonies, let's check out what the guitar is doing in the rhythm in the chorus. So it's a 12 string guitar part, check it out. Okay, so it's double 12 strings, one in each speaker, and it goes like this. It starts on E flat major, right? You got the capo, so. Then up to tenths. Then A flat over C. To B flat, and then F minor seven. Then it repeats. Then same thing. So it goes E flat to sus and then F major. Back to B flat for the interlude. Next, I want to take a listen to the vocals in the chorus. Gonna hit you right, head for the other side. Leave it all behind, never change my mind. Gonna sail away, sunlight's another day. Freedom on my mind, carry me away for the last time. Okay, you'll notice in the harmony parts, they start out with basic triads, right? So E flat major to A flat major. Now the other thing is that the guitar is actually playing using a sus4 there, but they're putting the A flat major over the E flat sus4. Just difference of one note. Sounds good sung though. Most of the other harmonies are just third based where they're not where they're not straight triads. There is one thing that's slightly different if I'm gonna be picky about it. Oh, yeah. It actually is uh there's a uh E natural in there, but it's just a tuning thing, but it's really straight thirds on the tag of the chorus. In the tag before the second verse, we have a little bit of a change in the progression. So he's going from B flat major to B flat seven sus four, and then E flat, and then back to B flat major. He does this. E flat major to E flat sus2 lick. What happens over this is the clean electric guitar is introduced. Check it out. Okay, so this clean picking part has this real mid rangey sound with a chorus on it, which is really identifiable for Boston's clean guitar parts. Let me play along with it. Okay, so next we have the second verse. Now the second verse has a similar melody to the first, but this one has the bass playing along and the bass is playing in contrary motion with it. This is one of the great things about this song. Check it out. Life is like the coldest winter the tears I cry Words of hell our minds are into I've got to crack this ice and fly Go. It's playing inversions, it's got the B flat chord, then it's got the A flat over B flat B flat over A flat. No, A flat over B flat. This is a really amazing bass part. It starts out in B flat, then it drops down to the A flat over B flat, then down to the G, which is a first inversion E flat major chord, and it winds around. Let's check out the bass and vocal together. I got a special guest, John Hopkins, to play bass on the second verse here. Check it out. Life is like the coldest winter. Got 
to crack this ice and fly. Go Thanks, John. He actually just happened to stop by out of the blue. Anyways, so the second chorus is the same as the first chorus, but it ends by modulating to the key of G with the organ solo. Check it out. Right here. Okay, the organ solo is done on a Hammond M3, which I just happen to have right here with a Leslie 147. Okay, right there, you hear the organ bend up in pitch. Well, organs couldn't bend up in pitch in 1975 when he recorded this. The only way I could ever figure out that he did that is that he stuck his finger on the actual reel of tape and slowed it down, which would, on playback, bring the pitch, make a pitch bend up like that. Okay, next I want to talk about the groove between the bass and drums that's happening during the solo. This is really pretty heavy of a rock groove with all the crashes that are going on, and the bass is incredibly busy and cool. Check it out. Gotta love the gong, too. Let's check out the backing part behind the organ solo. You've got acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and an organ pad. Check it out. Play along with it. Before the solo, we have a classic Boston thing. This is a feedback note with a whammy. And then it bends down. That actually could be made, honestly, by Tom uh, slowing the tape down on it and then dubbing it back into the track. But uh, that is a really classic Boston thing, and it goes right up the octave. He's probably tapping it to make it go up the octave, the feedback, but it leads perfectly into the solo. So let's talk about the solo now. The Boston solo sound, well, there's actually two different solo sounds in this. One has a lot of delay, the other one's really dry. But they both have this pointed mid-range, 1K, like a half cock wah. So I have this. I have this sound and I'm using a, uh, Crybaby Q Zone pedal to get that. This is a pedal like this that you can buy for like 125 bucks or something like that. I've had it for years and years. But instead of pushing the wah down and trying to find the right spot, you can just set that and you've got the sounds. Play along with the solo. <laughs> Okay, so post-solo, we have the out chorus, which features another guitar line. Check it out. That dual. And then, we're into the end solo. Now this is one of my favorite solos ever, this ending solo. It has a completely different vibe from the rest of the song. It's really exciting. There's so many cool things that happen. They have these overlapping dual guitar parts. One is really wet with a lot of delay and one is just bone dry. So let's check out what's going on in the rhythm part, the acoustic part uh, to start. Okay, this out chorus guitar part. Goes like this. Goes like this. Now 
that's the beginning of it. Okay, let's talk about the out chorus guitar solo. It starts like this. So you have double track solos, one in each speaker playing the same thing. Both have a lot of, a lot of delay on them. And I've got that, once again, I'm using the Q zone for that half cocked wah sound. So let me try and play along with it here. Ridiculous. The best part right here. Oh yeah. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thanks for watching.